Hello everyone. I uh, hope you all are staying safe and healthy uh, in this pandemic situation. So this video is about knowledge sharing program of uh, Koika Ecofe. So Koika conducts uh, knowledge sharing programs uh, annually aiming to uh, promote and aiming to enhance the skills of the Sri Lankan community. Uh, this time we are going to conduct uh, uh, this program with the collaboration of ECOFE. Actually, uh, ECOFE is our alumni association of Koika Fellows in Sri Lanka. Uh, basically, they conduct uh, knowledge sharing programs, this kind of knowledge sharing programs, chat events, and also they do some uh, networking events uh, to support uh, Sri Lankan community uh, with their knowledge. So, uh, so first, I will uh, briefly explain you about the about this program. Uh, as I mentioned you earlier, this program is aimed to promote interaction between Koika fellows and uh, Koika while serving fellow countrymen with the knowledge and abilities gained from the Koika training programs. We encourage our trainees to uh, conduct these workshops, uh, forums, conferences, seminars or lectures with uh, at least five people. Um, actually, uh, we used to uh, we actually we used to conduct this uh, program face to face. However, with the circumstance uh, caused by the COVID-19 uh, outbreak, we decided to conduct uh, this uh, program as a real time online or non real time online program. So this is our non real time online program. Uh, for this program, our presenter is uh, Ms. Uh, Jayatri Gurunathna. She has done her master's in international studies. Uh, which mostly related to capacity development of gender equality leadership uh, at Eva Women's University in Korea from 2018 to 2019. So she is going to share her knowledge in she is going to share her knowledge in Korea, uh, what she has learned and gained through the program. And further, she will briefly share some information of her thesis study. So watch this video first and. Uh, so we hope this would be a great experience to you all. So watch the video first and then leave a comment. Uh, then find the Google, uh, then don't forget to find the Google form in the uh, description section and fill it out because we are going to send a appreciation certificate to, to all those who all, who all completed this uh, three process. Watch the video and then leave a comment and then fill the Google form. So uh, we hope you may enjoy this video. Uh, let's move with the presenter. Hello everyone. Hi, I'm Chatri Gunaratna. Uh, I'm going to explain you about uh, my experiences in Korea during my stay at Almas University. Uh, I actually studied a master's program on international studies um, from August 2018 to December 2019 at Eva Almas University, and my scholarship was fully funded by Koika. So. Uh, when I was first requested to do this presentation, I was actually a bit hesitant because I had no idea uh, what I should say and what I shouldn't say because there's the whole bunch of information I have in my head. But then finally, I, I um, gathered some information, a very little of very little information from the experiences I gain and knowledge I gain, uh, which I thought would be helpful for you to have some sort of understanding about uh, life in Korea. So this is Eva Almost University, a picture I was taken in last fall 2019. Uh, Eva is very beautiful actually during all four seasons and it's very unique because it's a women's university. So for Korean students, 
they yeah. only allow female students but uh, for international students they allow male students as well for semester uh, it's like an exchange program so exchange male students are also there and I should say that Eva is actually a wonderful place where change begins and which is happened to be their slogan as well. So if you, if one of you ask me about my experience in Korea, so like put everything into one sentence, I'm going to say that it's the most amazing experience I ever had in my life so far. So let me explain you why. And before that, I'm going to explain to you how I will uh, go on during my presentation. So I divided my presentation into three parts. And at the first part, I'm going to explain about my experiences in Korea very briefly, and then I will speak about my thesis because I heard that there are going to be some university students here. So I hope you could gain some sort of understanding or knowledge about uh, this is your plan to write or you are writing now. And then finally, I will speak about the outcome and implementation of what I learned in Korea and how it can be applicable to a country like Sri Lanka, which is still a developing country. So let's move on. And right, so when I speak about my life in Korea and lessons learned, I'm going to divide it into two major parts. So because uh, I, I was in Korea for 17 months and most of my time I spend at the Women's University. So I'm going to, it's a, it's a very huge part of my life during my stay in Korea. And I'm going to explain how it was uh, for me. And then I'm going to tell you briefly on my personal experiences as well. So, right, in EVA, you do three things. And that is studying, studying, and studying. <laughs> so since, uh, it's not funny, that is really true actually, because I remember I went to Korea on 4th August and we stayed in Korka head office for a week. And then we moved to the university and believe me, since very next day we had classes. Uh, the fall semester started in September, but we had to complete prerequisite courses three of them. So we had to attend classes since very next day and it's the whole day, uh, morning and evening. So it was very hectic for me at the beginning. But, uh, you know, with the time and with the semester started, uh, I'm used to that. So, yeah, it's like that. In Niva, you won't do anything except study. So, you tend to do so many readings, write so many research papers, uh, including your thesis, and of course, to attend classes, uh, involve in discussions, make presentations. It's all about that. It's all about studying and to manage your time. And then, of course, this is something very interesting. Uh, as a student of Eva Almost University, uh, I, not only me, I'm like all of my colleagues, our badge, we received the opportunity to attend to so many international conferences. Uh, it has been a very, very interesting experience for me. I have been attending to conferences, research conferences, but I have never been attended to international conferences and I never had that exposure. So this was amazing opportunity. So I learned a lot. I gained a lot of knowledge. And uh, in addition to that, uh, you are uh, tend to meet some very famous international personnel, and I'm going to show you some pictures on my next slide. So hold on. Ah, uh, yeah, and finally the field trips, and these field trips were arranged by both Koika and Eva. So they took us to so many places, uh, especially to the places with cultural value and uh, some industrial companies such as on. Hyundai, Hyundai, I guess, 
uh, I can't actually forgive me because I can't actually remember the way how you call it. I think it's Huawei, the car factory, and also Samsung. Uh, and also we used to visit some uh, uh, places uh, which, which is related to our course. Uh, one of those places were the, it's, it's like, uh, it's not actually a hostel, it's a home, house of sharing you call it. Uh, the place where the, I, I am not sure whether you have heard about this comfort women, the women who were taken by Korea during the, uh, Korea, during Korean and Japanese war, uh, they, they were used as uh, sex slaves. So they still have a uh, uh, very few number of uh, those ladies uh, and they are living in that place. So we visited that place as well. That was so hard. We, like, we listened to so many hard touching stories. And of course we went to the North Korean, uh, Korean border. So yeah, uh, like, it was a very good experience. So I should say that during those 17 months, we visited so many places and we received so much of exposure about Korean culture and their economy as well. So, right, then moving into my personal experiences. First of all, when I think about that, the first thing that came into my mind is actually being independent. Because, uh, I should say that uh, Korea is a very safe place. Uh, you can even go out at night, 12.01 a.m. without any problem, without any fear. Nobody will even look at you. So you can just go out, you can uh, hang out with your friends and you can just eat very delicious Korean foods and enjoy time. And it's, uh, it's a process of, uh, identifying your own self, building up your own self, being independent. So once you're in Korea, you don't have anyone to take care of you, of course. Uh, like for us, we had Professor Emilia, our course director, and she used to be our mother. She took care of us very, very well. But still, um, you learn to be independent. And uh, you will get exposed to a totally new culture. And for me, it was not only a one culture, like it's, it wasn't only the Korean culture because for us, we had 20 ladies with us and they were from different countries. Uh, they had different social and cultural backgrounds and we used to stay together. So we used to move with each other, cope with each other, like we share differences and similarities. And it was uh, totally, uh, I should say a very new experience and a process of growing up because you because you learn to tolerate each other. You go out from your comfort zone and you learn to deal with things, deal with people, and you learn to solve your problems by your own self. So for me, it has been a process of growing up for myself. And I, I think I changed and I grew up a lot. I wasn't the same person when I come back in 2019. I changed a lot. And for that time, very much thankful for Yvonne's University and for Koika for giving me that opportunity. Because uh, for me, it was not only the academic gain it's not that I get the master's degree from Ibermans University, but in addition to that, this is a plus, or you can say a bonus point. Uh, personal development, personal grooming. So it has been a very, very wonderful and helpful experience for me. So, all right, so as I promised this, I'm going to show you some pictures. And this is His Excellency Ban Ki-moon, who used to be the former Secretary General of UN. 
uh, this is Professor Sanjay. She was actually a professor at Iwamas University as well. I took two courses with her. And she is the CEO of, uh, former CEO of Aridam TV and a very well known, very famous journalist in Korea. And this is Madame Irina Bokova. So this is me. I was uh, speaking at a conference. And this is my favorite picture. Uh, here's Professor Seydra Dar Hussein, who happens to be the former UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Uh, it's, it's important to me because uh, in my office, I deal with this UN and human rights things. And I have read like thousands of his statements, uh, his reports, but I, I never expected that I'm going to meet him personally and I'm going to have a photograph him like this. So I'm much more grateful about that opportunity in addition to the knowledge and exposure we gain uh, by attending to these conferences. It has been a very, very, uh, I should say, uh, interesting as well as like mind-opening experience for us. And then these are from the, my life at Eva. So these are my friends. These are actually from the previous batch. They are from 2017 batch. This, uh, we had a lunch uh, on the last day of their stay at Korea uh, during winter 2018. This is uh, my friends. And these are from the new batch, they are from 2019 batch. And this was my Filipino friend who happens to be one of my best friends during my stay in Korea, who is like still one of my best friends. We still keep in touch. And my Korean friends. And you can see very delicious Korean foods here including so many side dishes. This is during one of our field trips. Actually, it was our, uh, not last, uh, but um, one of longest field trips. And this was taken during an award ceremony. If you are a fan of K-drama, you should know that how crazy these Korean girls and boys towards this K-drama industry, the Korean actors. So we were so privileged to attend to one of these conferences personally because uh, in the middle is our Korean professor. She was able to get us tickets for free to attend to this uh, drama award ceremony. And it was really, really interesting and amazing. And this is a photo from my graduation day. So that's all about uh, Eva and Korea. And I'm going to define, not to define actually, to highlight some differences as I came across uh, and I noticed within Sri Lanka and Korea. So when I think about that, the first thing came into my mind was punctuality. Okay, Korean time is Korean time. So if you happen to go to Korea, you should know that you have to be very punctual. If they ask you to come to class or to office at 9 a.m., it's sharply 9 a.m. It's not 8.59 or it's not 9 p.m. It's sharply 9. And safety, of course. As I mentioned earlier, as well, Korea is a very safe country, very, very safe. You can travel anywhere alone. You don't have any problem. You don't need to worry. And of course, the politeness. Uh, Korean people are very polite and they don't care about your skin color or what language you speak or your gender or your age. They are being very polite to you. But um, I should say that at the beginning, perhaps uh, if you happen to meet a Korean, you, you will think that he's very rude because they don't speak much, but believe me, you should have some Korean friends and you will realize how friendly and polite they are. For me, I had a Korean friend and not only one actually, I had so many, but one of those, one of those, my friends, she visited me in last February in Sri Lanka because she missed me so much. So they are like that. And of course, Korea is a country with very strict law and order system. Uh, they have very strict law and 
which I believe is a reason for Korea to be a very safe country, as well as people to be very disciplined. And during my stay in Korea, one of the most uh, interesting thing I uh, experienced was traveling. So I used to travel as much as possible. Uh, even I went alone and went with my friends. So yeah, it was a totally uh, interesting experience. And one of the most important things I noticed during this trips was the equal distribution of infrastructure. It doesn't matter whether you are in a city like Seoul or Itaewon or in a rural coastal city like Sokcho, you have equal distribution of infrastructures. You have well-developed road system. You have well-developed buildings. Uh, it's true that it's not very popular, like uh, uh, not very, what do you call, uh, very, uh, urbanized like uh, a city, but still you have everything you need inside the village. Of course, traveling is very easy thing in Korea. So you have thousands of options. Uh, for me, my favorite was subway. And also you can take buses, you can take train line or the KTX express train, there are so much of options and it's very, very easy. And you can download apps into your phone and you just need to touch the destination you want to go and the map will show uh, the easiest path for you to go and which uh, station you should get down and which bus or train you should transfer. So it's really, really easy and there's no traffic. I mean, there is traffic, but not uh, so disturbing traffic. Uh, social life is a combination of almost everything I explained earlier. And in addition, uh, I need to add these two points as well. Korea is very eco-friendly. They love nature and they protect nature and they try their best to uh, protect what they have rather than destroying it. So everything they do in a order. For example, if you take garbage disposal, you have in almost everywhere, even in roads, inside university, inside your home, everywhere you have to dispose garbage separately and they will take your garbage. And if you don't do that, you have to pay a fine. They have methods to monitor you. So it's, it's really interesting. And also one of most, uh, Touching things is their love towards their country, Koreans. They really love their country and they are very proud about their country and their history. Uh, I assume that you're aware of Korean war and how they suffered during those days and how they came up from that. And if you compare where they were before 50 or 60 years and where they are today, it's amazing. It's amazing and in and from what i learned we had a course from korean economic to yeah it's a korean economic development and during that course we learned about the korean history and how they grew up and how they faced all these challenges and it was it was totally their love towards their country they were willing to sacrifice anything for their country which i believe we are still lacking, which, which I thought we need to develop. Right, and with that, I'm moving to the second part of my thesis. Uh, sorry, my presentation, and it's about my thesis. So my thesis, uh, we were requested to conduct our thesis based on a gender-related issue in our countries, our respective countries, so in my case, uh, when I was uh, looking for a research topic, I came across this because uh, I hope you are aware that the number of uh, students, uh, when you consider the number of students who get into tertiary education or to the university education, 
uh, number of female students are really high in comparison to number of male students. But, and, and also uh, female literacy in Sri Lanka is very high. It's more than 90%, which is the highest in South Asian, among South Asian countries. But when you come into the labor market participation of women, it's very, very low. Uh, according to a research conducted by ILO, uh, the number of females in labor market of Sri Lanka has never exceeded 35%, which is very, very pathetic. And for last two decades, it has been fluctuating between 30 to 35. Uh, basically, it has been around 30, 31, and 31.1, like that. So I found this is quite interesting. Uh, so I decided to conduct my thesis on this topic and I took my research question based on these issues. So it was why Sri Lanka and women are performing labor market despite their higher educational attainments. And to, do, to conduct my research, I adopted a qualitative method and I used both empirical and secondary data. Uh, I collected empirical data using uh, questionnaires. I used one of my friends in Sri Lanka and I sent her a questionnaire and she distributed it among the sample and she sent it to me back and then I analyzed data. So the findings were quite interesting because uh, when I was doing my literature, there has been several other researchers done based on the same topic, but the finding was uh, quite similar that the findings of many of these researchers were based on, not based on, but focusing on the social issues. So they were finally deciding that women do not want to get involved, get into labor market because of social issues such as getting married, having children, need to take care of children, and the family pressure because your mother or father and your husband they don't want you to work, so you don't work and you are staying at home uh, and taking care of household work despite your education level. But uh, during my research, I came across with totally different uh, findings. And according to that, economic factors such as economic structure and the labor market dynamics of the country were much more significant than social factors. So for me, it was, it was the economic factors. So I brought the concept of these better jobs because during my data collection, I came across it some specific factors that women are concerned of when they are selecting a job. And it was, uh, they are more concerned about the job security, the status of job, and the salary they gain, as well as the other benefits such as uh, ability to take leaves when necessary and ability to go home on time, etc. So, in my mind, when I was thinking of this, all my thoughts were concerned to the government jobs, right? Uh, so when you think about government job, you have all these facilities. You have that prestige, okay, I'm doing a government job, and you have that job security, okay, I'm having a pension, and you are getting a relatively good salary. You can't say it's very good, but it's relatively good. So uh, I think, uh, my hypothesis was correct because if you saw news last few days, there has been uh, unemployed graduates who were waiting for around eight or nine years without going for a job and they were expecting and they were waiting until the government gives them a job. So this is actually very pathetic. You have to be uh, you don't have to stay at home for eight years expecting government to give you a job. But uh, sadly, that is the situation of Sri Lanka. And for that, I believe our education system is also responsible because as you know, that we have free education and it's very, very competitive. So you will get that mindset. Uh, once you get selected to university, you tend to think that, okay, I selected to university, so I'm 
uh, it, it's, it's a very rare opportunity because uh, from the total number of students who sit for the A-level exam, uh, very few number of them are getting selected to the university. So you know that you're a scholar. Actually, it's not the, the scholar is wrong, but sometimes you have the feeling that you are, you are uh, more educated and you are more intelligent. So you are deserve to, you are deserving to have a better job, which is uh, like a government job. But um, I think we need to come out from this mentality in order for country to have a better future. So uh, if any of you, like, are there, I, I, I don't know what, uh, who you are actually, but uh, if there are any university students who are interested in conducting your thesis on the same topic or quite a similar topic, I have identified some research limitations on this area, so I'm happy to share with you that. I'm going to give you my email at the end of this presentation, so if there are any questions, so if, uh, if you want to know something, you're interested in this field, uh, just email me. I'm going to share information with you. Uh, and that, uh, that I'm going to move into the final part of this presentation and the outcome of implementation. And um, actually, I regret to say that although I learned about gender equality, I didn't do anything uh, once after I come back to implement or to distribute my knowledge I came from the government university. And one of reasons for that is uh, where I work, I don't get much opportunities to work uh, related to these gender related matters. And the other thing is, uh, this is uh, my, my understanding and my belief. I think Sri Lanka is yet to come to that stage because um, we are still a developing country, a middle income country, and there are thousands of fundamental issues that we need to be addressed rather than we address to the issues related to gender equality. Before we are addressing to those issues, we need to address actually economic issues, I guess. Uh, we need to eradicate extreme poverty. We need to develop infrastructure. We need to um, provide more occupational opportunities for people. Uh, so I think as a country, we are not yet ready to prioritize gender-related issues in Sri Lanka. I might be wrong, but this is my understanding. So I came across with some issues, which I think uh, is significant to not to have gender issues as a uh, very pressing problem inside Sri Lanka. And when I speak about gender equality, I think you would remember that we had a, a series of discussions during last couple of years to increase the number of female uh, politicians uh, in parliament as well as in uh, these provincial councils. So in my understanding, increasing the quantity of female MPs inside parliament or inside provincial council will not solve this problem unless the quality of those uh, female leaders are at an excellent level that, you sh that they are uh, able to address or speak on behalf of other women's rights. So this is not this is not only applicable to politics, but to all the other fields. But I'm just getting an example since it's easier. So I think uh, the quality of the female leaders matters, and you need to have that education. You need to be very intelligent, and you should have that strong personality and courage to speak on behalf of other women in front of men. So if you can't do that, it doesn't matter the number of uh, female leaders or the MPs inside parliament increased as long as there is no outcome from that. 
So in that sense, I think there's a long way for us to go. Still, we are at the, I can't say we are at the middle stage, but I think we are sort of beginning to address these gender-related issues. But uh, slowly we will move on. Of course, gender equality is very, very important. It's one of the SDG goals as well. And when I speak about gender equality, I should say that Sri Lanka is the only South Asian country who was uh, enabling implementing gender equality in, uh, in achieving universal primary education. So in that sense, we can't say we are so far behind. But we have come into a certain level, but still there is a long way for us to go to address those issues. So until then, it's fighting. So this is the end of my presentation. And thank you all for listening. And if you have any questions or suggestions, you can email me on this email address. Uh, I'm happy to receive comments and you, I'm happy to answer if you have any questions. So thank you. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. <laughs>